So the next one here, this shows here um, how it affects it. See, once this is diabetic peripheral neuropathy, like uh, with diabetics, they'll tend to lose sensation. Uh, particularly in their hands and their feet, but also penile. You can lose penile sensation because once these, that once again, that's why I started with the blood vessels. Once the blood vessels are compromised, okay, see this is occluded, so it's not getting nearly as much blood flow, then the nerve cannot get the blood flow. And the nerve starts deteriorating as a result, okay? These structures in your body, even bones, everything in your body, needs blood, needs blood flow to it to, to supply it nutrition. And when it's the nerves aren't getting that, they're going to get affected. Okay. That's the, it starts with the, the blood flow, but it ends up damaging the nerves. That's what's so insidious about uh, diabetes. Okay. And this kind of just kind of breaks it down a little bit more. You can see right there on the top, diabetes, other things as well, though, that can play into this oxidative stress which it causes uh, the endothelial dysfunction. They put inflammation over here, but I put inflammation right up here too. Inflammation affects it all. Inflammation is at the source of it all. Okay. Uh, oxidative stress is just a form of inflammation and it goes in there and damages the endothelial cells. Um, let's see. Okay. This one, um, I don't know if I'm going to have time to go too deep in here, but the reason I put this one in is this blood fluidity thing. Once again, I talked about that fourth state of water because blood flow is, uh, I mean, blood itself uh, is composed mostly of water, right? So when that endothelial layer is damaged, it's no longer as hydrophilic. So it doesn't allow the blood to naturally, the water to naturally flow the way it, it normally would. Okay, this, this kind of breaks down the progression that's happening. So if we look at this, it all starts, see, right from the beginning to the end, endothelial dysfunction, endothelial layer, right? That's where it all starts. So there starts to be a problem in the endothelial layer, and then it gradually turns into, you know, first it's foam cells, fatty streak, intermediate lesions, all this stuff breaks up into some serious plaque into your blood vessels. And that, see how much it greatly narrows the amount of blood that can get through that blood vessel. Okay. So it happens over time, but once again, the source of it, the, the, the cause of it is the initial problem with the endothelial layer. Okay, and that ha happens as a result of diabetes, but all different kinds of inflammatory processes that we're having in our body. So this doesn't just have to be diabetes. Okay, diabetes does this, but anything you're putting in your body, say you're eating crappy food all the time, and it's got getting a lot of inflammation in your gut and then into your blood vessels, well, then this builds up over time and you end up with heart disease. Okay, same process though all starts here with the endothelium. It all starts with inflammation. It all depends on where that inflammation is coming from. Okay, then this kind of breaks it down too. This shows it a little bit more graphically what I was talking about before in that, you know, here's the nerves that go throughout your body. And um, the, the diabetics tend to notice it first in their feet. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the, it's more difficult for blood flow to get down there to begin with. But when you're compromised with diabetes, even more so, you'll see here that the uh, nerve itself has a blood supply. <clears throat> Excuse me, just like anything. Okay, so it has to be supplied nutrition. And when those blood vessels start to become compromised, it can't supply the nutrition. And then you get problems with the nerves. Okay. And that's why they start to lose sensation, okay? Like I said, even in your penis, this happens all over your body. Every, um, every nerve in your body has a blood supply. And if your blood supply is compromised, this kind of thing can happen. Okay, and this sort of breaks it down more as well. Um, it, I like this particular one. It, it kind of pulls together a couple of things. What I wanted to um, bring up here 
primarily was this fibrosis here on the bottom because that's what ends up happening over time as this builds up. Um, these tissues, since they're not getting, they're becoming inflamed over time, in chronic inflammation, they're building up plaque. They start to calcify and become fibrotic. They become tough. So they're not allowing, they're not supple. They can't, blood vessels just can't open up and, and close like they should. And they start developing these fibrotic scar-like tissues. And when that happens in the penis, which we're showing over here, you get these fibrotic uh, tissues in here. And it, it does a couple of different things. One of which is you can't get as much blood flow in there. But even if you did, since it's fibrotic, okay, then in, in like scar tissue, it can't expand as much. It, it's, it's, it like pulls on each other. And that's the thing about fibrotic tissue and scar tissue is the fibers are random. They go all over the place. So it doesn't matter what direction it tries to move, it's going to come up against resistance. So it's very difficult or much more difficult for the penis to fill up with blood fully because of all this fibrotic tissue. That's why we spend, especially with diabetics, I spend a lot of time helping them break up this fibrotic tissue that's in their penis, okay? And the blood flow that supplies the penis. Because like I said, this is a big limiting factor. And uh, it's, it's really chronic in diabetics. Diabetics particularly have to worry about this particular fibrotic issue. When it comes to getting throbbing, stage four, rock hard on command, and lasting as long as you want in the bedroom, both permanently and naturally at any age, the first step is understanding exactly what is going on under the hood of your manhood. Because if a man doesn't understand the basic mechanics of how his manhood works, how can he expect anything he tries to work? He just ends up throwing punches in the dark and then is frustrated when everything he tries stops working and makes his hardness and lasting power worse over time, conveniently leading him to more and more extreme treatments that further destroy his manhood and his ability to perform in the bedroom. So if this is a priority for you and you would like to finally get off a big pharma's hamster wheel, keeping you trapped, broken, and desperate, then you're going to want to set aside about 75 minutes to watch this free training I made just for you that's going to allow you to finally understand the ecosystem behind your manhood and bedroom performance. Like fixing a leaky pipe, you can't just drywall over it or you'll end up with a house full of black mold. You have to fix the source of the leaky pipe if you want permanent results that will last a lifetime. So I put a link in the description to claim a 24-hour access pass to my new masterclass that will take you by the hand and show you exactly what's going on under the hood. So you can finally understand exactly what methodologies, frameworks, and systems that our guys are using right now to conquer their bedroom performance permanently and naturally at any age. So go ahead and click the link in the description, and I'll see you inside the masterclass. Xander Holt, signing off.